God for our being here and for those that are on the line. We're going to go and get opened up and uh, we're we going to ask uh, someone to lead us in a song and uh, someone to lead us in prayer this morning. Yeah, we're gonna ask someone from the congregation to lead us in a song this morning. Let us stand. Thank you. Thank you for the song that you made. And uh, thank you, Mr. Faison, for the prayer. It, before we uh, before we turn it over to uh, Trustee Wooden, I will ask you to to turn to uh, page five in your new Sunday school book. And, and we'll, we'll read the exercise. Okay. If it had not been for the Lord who were on my side, now may Israel say, If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us. 
then they had swallowed <coughs> excuse me, then they had swallowed us up quickly when their they wrath were killing it against us. And the waters the drain had gone over our then the prize of the water had gone. Oh, wait, I'll just read it out. Okay. Uh, our soul is a skate as a bird. Huh? Oh, okay. I'm, I'll forgive him. Okay, then the proud water had gone over our soul. Okay, our soul is a skate as a bird out of the snare of the flower, and the snare is broken, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Our reading will come from First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 4 through 9. Then, then every one of you should know how to possess the vessel. In the second, uh, not in the last of even in the Gentile which know not God, that no man go beyond and defile his brother in any mouth because of such. For God has not called us into uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore is by, is by not man, but God, who, who has also given unto us his Holy Spirit. But as touching the brotherly love, you need not to write. For you yourself have taught to God and to the love of one another. Amen. Thank you for the reading of the word. At, at this time, we're going to turn the, um, the Sunday school lesson over to our um, trustee woman. Our lesson for the day is from Exodus second chapter, one through ten, fifteen through twenty-two. And we're talking about the birth of Moses. Now the birth of Moses is a story of God preparing a leader to deliver Israel. It's also a story of protect the family who won't who went through great lengths just to save him. And Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, he had instructed the midwives to kill all the Hebrew children, Hebrew boys, as soon as they were born. But let the girl live, because he said that they are the weaker sex and could be bred by the Egyptian men, taking and making Egypt more powerful and wealthy. Now the midwives fear God more than they feared him, so they didn't obey him. They didn't obey the king. <laughs> They let the boy live too. And then the king sent for the midwives and said, Well, how come y'all disobeyed me? Why did y'all disobey me? What did I tell y'all to do? And they said, Said the Hebrew women have their babies so quickly, we can't get to them in time. They are not like the Egyptian women. They, they are different. And for a while, he went along with that. And, and you know, both Moses parents, Aaron and Joshua, they were both from the tribe of Levi. And his mother felt there was something special about him. And she took measures, uh, <clears throat> she took measures to, to save him. And then um, she, she was able to hide him for three months after he was born. And can you imagine trying to hide a baby, that whimper and all that kind of stuff? But she was able to do that for three months. And then she realized, you know, she couldn't do any more. Something had to be done. She couldn't hide him anymore. There were supervisors. There was uh, all kinds of people that, and people, other slaves, they knew she was pregnant. So they knew sooner or later she would have to deliver. So she was, it was going, it was going to get out. So she said, she, she made a basket. And, and she made a little basket like a boat. And uh, 
she fixed it up and she put him in there and he started floating down the down the Nile River. Uh, and can you imagine how she must have felt when she put her baby in there? There's crocodile snakes, there's also Egyptian people, there are mean people. She had to pray and take a chance. She had to have faith. She said, I don't like these unfair laws. This is very unfair. So that's what she did. She put him in there and he went on down to the, he started floating in, in the Nile River. But she said, um, and then the, how God planned is, she sent his, his parents' daughter came to bathe in the river. She came there to bathe the river, and she saw the basket, so she sent her, her servant, her handmaid, I said, go get that basket. What in the world is that? So they brought it to her, and she opened it. She saw the baby crying, and she said, oh, that's one of the Hebrews' children. And so by that time, Moses' sister Miriam, being a child, she came from out of her hiding place. And she volunteered, said, you want me to go get one of the Hebrew women to nurse him? She said, well, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Why not? And she said, when she went, naturally, she got Miriam. She, I mean, she got her mother, Joshua, for the one to nurse the baby for Pharaoh's daughter. And she told us that when she came, she told us that, yeah, I'll pay you. I'll pay you good money for your service. So, uh, and they, neither one of them knew the whole story. Uh, at least the daughter, Pharaoh's daughter, knew less than the other students. But anyway, as Moses grew, and, and you know he was weaned from his mother, they had to do something different. So they took him to Pharaoh's daughter. She adopted him and gave him the name Moses. She said, I drew him out of the water. And when you look at this lesson, there's so many good points in there, and so many points of faith. Now, uh, Moses was born in some hard times, but God had a plan all along. And when God got a plan for us, sometimes it seems like we ain't even on that same path. We just, we said, well, if God got a plan for me, how come I'm going through this? How come I'm, this is so hard? When will I get to the joy part of it? But God has a plan, just like he did for Joseph. If you remember, Joseph was sold to the care of his first put in the pit. And then his brother Reuben said, let's don't kill him, uh, uh, let's put him in the pit. And then when that caravan come by going to Egypt, they sold him. And he went through so many trials there in, in uh, Egypt. But look what happened in the end. So when God has a plan for us, we're going to go through a lot of things. We're going to go through stuff anyway, but when he got a plan for you, you know, it'll seem like sometimes, well, where is the plan? What's going on? I don't even see it. I must not, I must have mistaken, but you did not mistake it. But this is the way God works. And he said that uh, by uh, God had his plan for Moses. And, and, and the lesson also is about three women. The three women who to do their part, not even aware that their role, what their role is. They have become a united family to save Moses. All because of Moses, they have become a united family. Pharaoh's daughter, his mom, and his sister Miriam. Three women now of different ages, different races, social standing. Of course, Miriam and Joshua was mama and daughter, but I'm saying how Pharaoh's daughter come in there and she wants to save the baby. And God has put things, he has got the things the way he wanted. You, you're going to go through, you're going to do what he wants you to do. His plan is going to work for you. Now, and I just think about Joshua, Moses' mother. Where did she get the knowledge or the thought to make a little basket? I mean, you know, uh, his mother had to have faith that he would be safe. She was courageous and she was determined to buck that unfair system. And then you, you look at Miriam. Miriam could not just watch. She had to intercede. Now, if she had been the door, been one of the Egyptian and Pharaoh's 
uh, command. She'd been in school that day, but they probably didn't even let, they couldn't go to school, I'm sure. So she was there. But see, God had a plan for her, much more important than going, than anything else, maybe even than going to school that day. He knew he had these women was going to be part of his plan to save the Moses, who was eventually going to be the leader of his people. And she watched from that distance. I mean, the first opportunity she got, she knew exactly what she was going to do. And when she told her, said, uh, I'm, can you want me to go get one of those Hebrew ladies, Hebrew women? She said, yeah. She knew who she was going to get. God had really inspired her as a child. They said she was uh, possibly, one version I read, she was probably about eight years old. That's a lot of knowledge for eight year old. And, uh, and see, and the princess, and when you, when you notice the princess, when she discovered the baby, uh, um, now uh, Miriam acted as a middle person, but when the princess discovered the baby, uh, she said, and the baby was crying, she just, she just melted down like babies. You know how babies do us. They know how to make us male baby. Uh, uh, soon as she discovered, Miriam just come out from hiding somewhere. And nobody knew how far she was, what she was doing there. But she was standing from a distance just watching. I don't know where the mother was, but everything came together just like God had planned. And see, Miriam is an evidence of age. It doesn't make any difference. God can use a child just like he can use a grown person. It does not affect God's plan, your age, your color, or whatever. It doesn't affect him at all. And, you know, just think what would have happened if Miriam stayed in hiding and remained silent. It could have been, it could have been a lot worse. It could have been sad. But that's not what God had planned. See, nothing. I'm sure now that princess, she was the daughter of Pharaoh. Now, you know, Pharaoh owned everything. She had her own probably bathroom at home. She had her own shower, everything. Why she need to come to the river to take a bath? Because that was in God's plan. We know that she was Pharaoh's daughter. She had everything she could want. But she came down to the river to take a bath that day. And it was all in God's plan. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, you know, and then another thing, she knew the baby was Hebrew. She knew how her daddy hated him. Why would she want him? God's plan. Mm -hmm. Why would she want the baby if her daddy hated those people? And what made her think that she was going to be able to keep him? God's plan. And then we go down, you know, uh, he rewarded Joshua, Moses' mother, for her faith in him and her faith in not killing Moses, you know, Pharaoh said. And, you know, if you look at this story now, uh, she was paid. She probably now she had Aaron and she had Miriam. So she already had two children and Moses made three. So she kind of like had a little daycare there, and she got paid for it. And that was great. Pharaoh's daughter paid her to supposedly to watch after Moses, to raise Moses. But then she already had her too, so basically she got paid for all three of hers. Like I said, like having a little daycare or a nursery. But, uh, <clears throat> but what I'm saying is that... Uh, when God is in it, you don't know how you're going to work in the first place. But when, when God is in it, you may go around some crooks, some bends. You're going to go through some mountains and all. But you're going to come out in the end right where he wanted you to come out of. You know, why did she agree to let the Hebrew woman raise it? I'm sure they had made, she had maids, they had, and, and all that stuff. But see, God's plan. She she let uh, he she could have taken him if she wanted him, then taken him back to the to the royal temple, and and she could have had all kinds of maids. She brought two had maids with her when she came to bathe. 
but she could have had all of that and wouldn't even have to worry about paying a Hebrew woman raise her. But she let the Hebrew woman raise her. And then another thing, when, when the Miriam asked the Pharaoh's daughter, said, do you want me to go get one of the Hebrew women? Well, usually, according to the lesson, most of the time, you you know, somebody like the Hebrew or nobody, they don't be speaking to the royal family unless uh, unless they are called. If they are sent for, they come. You don't just speak out to them. But look what God inspired her to ask her. All along, God had this thing orchestrated. And, and she said, and, you know, and, 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 this, and this is what really is so cool about it. She was paid to take care of her own child. And then, then she, and they took, they took Moses back to Pharaoh's daughter after he grew, got a certain age. And, and, uh, she, she brought him to the palace. Now, now, now listen to this. Moses was being fed, he was clothed, and educated, and raised in the same house as the man who ordered his death. You can't mess with God. You can't mess with God's people, children, because when you mess with his children, you mess with him. Amen. Now, he hated him. He hated the Hebrew. Hated all that stuff. And I don't know how he took it, but she brought that baby back after a certain, I mean, after he had grown up a little bit. And, and uh, Joshua and them could no longer keep it. She had to bring, brought him in, the, in, in there, in the palace. He ate the same thing. That, that Pharaoh ate. I mean, he was clothed and they said he was educated and raised up in the same house. So that, that tell you, when you, when you're on a mission for God, nobody can't, nobody can't mess with you. Nobody can't turn you back. They may mess with you. They may cause you some heartache. But if you keep on traveling, just keep on traveling. And then, God delivered Moses so he could deliver the Israelites. God always has a plan. And he can use anyone to carry it out. People that we, people, he can use people we least expect to carry out his plan. Because I'm sure there were some that would least expect when they found out Joshua was, was pregnant, probably said, what in the world is she going to do now? What is she going to do? She's got a, a Aaron and she's got Miriam. So, as you know, and the king has already said, kill all the Hebrew boys. And see, the king was so evil. He wanted all the Hebrew boys killed, but he wanted the girls to live so that the Egyptian could breed them and make them a bigger nation and they would be wealthy. It is, that is the, that is hateful. And, and you know, it's just, it's kind of like what, now, as we, we look at things now, we can sympathize with those people because we as a people, we as a race is going through some of the same stuff. We're suffering because of who we are. We've got unjust laws. Too often, you know, these unjust laws oftentimes lead to arrest, conviction, incarceration, and sometimes death of African American youth. It's like, you know, many African American parent, you know, have the job of trying to teach the young children how to interact with the law enforcement because law enforcement has already decided that the child is a threat. It can be a small child, already decided it's a threat. We, we, we understand what some of the uh, Israelites was going through. And, you know, and unfortunately being African American, you can just conduct the everyday activity. It's dangerous. Like, Armand Aubrey jogging, walking home from the store like Trayvon Martin, sleeping in your own bed like Breonna Taylor, just to name a few. But I'm saying we are kind of like the, the Israelite was fair and there with Pharaoh. They can do, seems like they can do anything they want to to us, and they can always say they were justified in doing what they had to do. And it ain't so. It's not true at all. But that is how we are treated here. And it's, it's sad. It's very sad. 
but um, and it looks like it's not getting a whole lot better. All we have is God. We have each other if only we could get along with each other. If we like each other and and, and if we work with each other, we could move mountains. I mean, thank God for those people who long ago, like Harriet Tubman, Nat Turner, Dr. Martin Luther King, John Lewis, and those who stood up for unfair laws. Thank God for them. has helped us get where we are now. But now they're gone. We got to take the torch. We got to pick it up. And we got to carry it on. Because after a generation of most of us in here, after we're gone, it's going to be rougher and rougher for our young ones. And, and so we'll try to teach them all we know, although sometimes they think we are ancient and they don't listen. But, you know, it's kind of like the Bible said, train up a child the way she go. Wow. Down the road, they're going to remember what daddy told me, mama told me, auntie or somebody. They remember that. And sometimes they come to the end and they don't have anywhere to go but to the Lord. So I'm saying that we are like the Israelites. And the Israelites fared tough until Moses grew up and, the, and God used him to deliver them. And as believer, you know, we must obey God rather than man. Amen. Rather than man unjust laws. That's what Joshua did. That's what the midwife did. He had told them, said, I want you to kill all of them. All them boys. All the Hebrew boys. But they said, you know, we're not going to do it. Just, that's unjust. We won't have no generation, no future if we kill our boys. So they said it's just unfair. And when he didn't, he wanted them to kill them from when the, when the child is pulled out of the body. But then he said, throw them in the Nile River, drown all of them. But the thing about it is, <clears throat> it was so it was so unfair, he wanted to kill them, but leave the women so his so the men in, in, in Pharaoh's army could breed them. And that won't right. Just think what they would have to go through. But God had a plan. Just like he got a plan for us. You know, we must not be afraid to speak up against injustice. Just like we said, Harriet Tubman, Dr. Martin Luther King, and so many others along there. You know, above all, the main thing we can do is to stay in prayer, read God's word, and keep looking to the hills from whence come our help. We've got to learn to get along with each other within our race so we can band together and, and, and fight some of this stuff that's going on outside our race. We don't have, we don't have the structure. We don't have this, the, the, we don't have this, this going, this get up and go stuff because we've been spending most of our time fighting each other. And we, and you know, we ain't got much fight left in us because we done spent it. But, but we need to, you know, even after we got differences and, you know, going to school, all of us had teachers we didn't like. I know I did, but, but I figured, <laughs> but what I figured was maybe I don't like you, but you got what I need. So I'm going to have to deal with you. If I can buckle down I won't, and I make my grade, I won't have to worry with you no more. So it is with a lot of things, but we need each other to fight the stuff that we're going through. It is it is a rough, rough world out there. It's rough on all of us, but we do fear for our youth that's coming. We won't be there. We'll be going on for our reward. And, and that is, is a concern that all of us, I believe, have. And the youth seem like they can't go nowhere. They can't walk nowhere. They get stopped. They can't drive nowhere. They get stopped. It's just a mess. But God got a plan for us, just like he had for the Israelites. And he's going to use the ones he wants to use to take care of his plan of redemption. So we're going to stay in prayer. And we're going we're gonna to just maybe put aside some differences or whatever we need to do. We're going to band together because we need the strength of everybody. All of us need strength. We need everybody's strength so that 
we can make it because everybody needs everybody. And we're going to pray and we're going to study the word. We're going to stay with God. And it's going to be rough, but we're just going to keep right on going. We're going to persevere in what we need to do. Because we don't have, if we, we just buckle down, because we ain't got that long to do it no way. So, so, you know, we got just a little while to stay here. Then we're going to be gone. So if we can just persevere and hang on in there and stay with God, Everything will be all right. Are there any comments? And I thank God for you. I thank Him for letting you stand up there and give us that awesome blessing this morning. And I just thank you. And like you said, the team was telling the uh, the maid to kill the uh, the baby boy. And she didn't do it because she feared God. She was doing what God asked her not to do. And she had that faith in God. So she made sure that baby could that, that made sure that baby could float on and mm -hmm. somebody else could get it because they were doing what God wants them to do instead of man telling them what to do. Because they know God had the last say and he was gonna do what he was gonna do. So if you do what God asks you to do. Regardless of if you love me if you want to, you can hate me if you want to, that's still okay. Do what God says do, because he's going to take care of everything else. And then that lady made sure, they made sure that baby didn't get sick. So that's one thing they didn't have to be stressed out All right. about something yeah. they didn't do right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do it right and do what God to do, then you won't be stressed out. There you go. Are there any other comments? school situation but I've decided when I uh, <clears throat> I, I talked to the Lord I fixed it up with Jesus and I'm all right now I don't it doesn't matter doesn't matter I come in here and do what what I was told to do uh, the best way I know how and I'm all right now I fixed it with Jesus and I'm all right now are there any uh huh. Uh, look, one thing we need to learn is no matter what we need to do with God and call us to do, mm -hmm. He has already got it in place for us. We just have to put our hands in His hands, keep trusting, keep walking, and He'll feel through. Amen. Amen. That's right. Well, see, when you when you got it, when you fix it with Jesus, you don't a lot of things you would have worried about. Worried about did I uh, should I should I have said something? 
Should I do this or did that one like me? Did that one like me? You don't worry about that no more. Once you give it to God, you fix it with Jesus, you're going on to do the work that you have to do. Are there any other comments? Again, we want to uh, thank you, uh, Trustee Wood. At, at this time, we are here from the youth. Someone from the adult class respond on the list. Chapel Missionary Baptist Sunday and St. Stephen's Sunday on Sunday school, the second day of October in the year of our Lord 2022. The school will call to order by Deacon Ray May at 10 o'clock. Deacon May, um, then I open the hymn, I will trust in the Lord. Prayer by Reverend Faison. Scripture for today came from Exodus 2, 1 through 10. The subject of the lesson of protect the family. The main thought is Exodus 2 and 2. Total attendance was 32. Total offering is $38. The lesson was reviewed for 28 minutes by Trustee Wooden. The closing remarks um, for the youth were made by Trustee Faye Dupree and by the adults, Mother Dupree. All your officers remain the same. Amen. I would like to add to that before we do it. I need to start giving it to you because uh, I got about 10 that we watching. Okay. Thank you. So a total of forty two. Again we want we want to thank him Mr. Minister Howell for the for the reading. And um I will remind y'all, everyone, that Sunday school will begin at 10 o'clock from now on. That's every Sunday. Okay. You are here to read the word. Are there any corrections? If not, we're going to, we'll receive the word, receive the minute as given. At this time, we're going to ask everyone to stand. We're going to close out with the word. Amen. 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 Thank, thank each and every one.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. We pray the Lord again for our being here this morning. We just thank God for all the things that He done for us this morning. And what a beautiful day it is. Just think how good the wind blows, lightning this week, and, and just think of all what the hurricane did in other places. But God had blessed us to allow us to be here again uh, this morning. So we owe Him a word of praise. And he just to say thank you this morning. I give reference to my Lord and Savior this morning to the pastors, to uh to my pastor to to I say you 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 everybody in the house even on the conference call that way I won't miss anyone. I just thank God for our being here this morning, and, and I listen to the Sunday school lesson this morning. I sang my little song this morning, but I will trust in the Lord. That's my song, and all what we're going through. In our community, our, our government, and we got to learn how to put our trust in the Lord. And so I want to read this scripture before we get thought this morning. Uh, Psalm 37. In the Psalm of David, and David was saying here, Trust in the Lord and be not afraid. It's in the Psalm, right, right, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, and whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemy, and my foe came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host of the host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing I have desire of the Lord that I will seek after, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord all days of my life. Behold the beauty of all day of my all day of my life to to behold the beauty of the Lord to inquire in his temple. And the sunrise said, and we're going through a lot today. David was saying, even though wars, and we hear war and rumor war, you talked about in your Sunday school lesson, about what our young people are going through. We talked about what the government is going through. But you know what? I will still put my trust in the Lord. He is my light and my salvation. Even though there are times that we can't see our way, God is working out. That's what you said in the Sunday school lesson this morning. That's what they were saying here this morning, that he will put his trust in God. And sometimes, we worry sometimes about things we just shouldn't have any worry about. I know it looked bad on this side. That's why the teacher was saying this morning. I know it bad, but God is working it out. When we can't see it, we don't know how it's working out. We don't know what the fish is coming to hold for our people. You know what? I trust God. Amen. See all these little children here? This morning. We're not going to doubt what the future hold for them. We're going to trust that God can continue to bless. But he is blessed. You know, the, when we would come up, we were small. It looked like we didn't have a future, but God was working out. We were still here this morning. We were blessed this morning. And so I was just adding this scripture this morning to what she was talking about in Sunday school this morning. David said, I will trust in the Lord. That's why I love saying this song. I can't sing. I just hear it now and then, but I do, I do my best. I will trust in the Lord until I die. That's long enough. Yeah. That's long enough. I will trust in the Lord all the days of my life. When I can't see what's going on. I, I got a couple extra minutes to talk. I'm going to give you to talk. But that's what we say in the morning. So I'm going to praise God. I'm going to give him the praise. Because well, I know it not because I can't see. I don't know what's going to happen to tomorrow. On tomorrow, but I trust God oh, God. that tomorrow is just gonna be just as beautiful as the day will, cause it'll be a brand new day. And I trust God when I messed up the day, I trust Him. Let me see tomorrow and get it right again. So I praise God. I thank God. And you know the word of prayer that continue to pray for me that I do the thing that the Lord will have me do to the best of my ability. May not be to you, but to the best of my ability. What the Lord would have me to do. So I pray to God. I get to God. I thank God for all what He done for me in my life. Uh, what He had done. I even pray for what He got to do in the future. 
If I know it, that'd be something good. They always be good. Even it might not look good at times, but it's still good. So it comes, you're right, brother. It comes from God. Amen. So if you, if you have a song, you have, I'm going to ask you at this point, I'm going to ask Deacon May, we can give him a short prayer this morning as we open our devotion service. Very hard. Eternal God, this again we come before you. We come, Father God, first of all, I want to thank you for last night, Red. Yes, thank you, O oh God, for waking us up and let us see another beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Yes. And God, thank you for letting us come back in to, to worship and praise you. Yes, Lord. Father God, we ask you to bless those that are here, bless the ones online, mm -hmm. and help Father bless the ones that desire to be here. Lord, we, have, we just ask you to have your way in this place today. Yes. And God, we ask you all these blessings in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 At this point, I declare a devotion service open that you might have a word you want to say for the Lord. Uh, praise a uh, word. I want to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Pastor Lord, members of the house, to each and everyone in the house today. Truly it is a blessing just to be here, you know. Not even this song, but if you look at that song, it could have been a, but, you know, God spared us, and we are here. And I just give him the praise and the glory, because through it all, he, he has protected us, and he got to continue, you know, protecting us and, and carry us through. I just ask y'all, continue praying for me, and I'll pray for you the best I know about. Amen. Amen. Be Let me tell you what devotion service is all about. Devotion is inviting the Holy Spirit in. Mm -hmm. That's that what we want. We invite the Spirit in this morning. And, 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 and every time we send a praise up, let me put it to this way. I'm just paraphrasing. Jay. Every time we send a praise up, we tell Satan to get out. Mm -hmm. uh, we come here this morning to praise the Lord. We come up to lift for His name this morning. And, and you don't have to say a whole lot of words. You don't have to uh, run, jump, and shout. But at home, you don't always do it. Some, some do. I get at the home, at, at the, at home, by myself, at least I say, Lord, I thank you for this day. Yeah. And every now and then, I look at the one, just look at the day. Just look at it. it, it the light inside the bedroom is beautiful, but then I, I then I might just stroll to the front door, just open the door and just look out. Because the new day and, and behold the beauty of the Lord. The Lord, I thank you. There'll be anyone this morning. I'm just going to say good morning, everyone. The protocol has been called. Um, I just want to say um, back in 1997, my mama uh, uh, had terminal illness, and I'll never forget when I walked out of the room. And uh, everybody started hollering, and so I just picked up my phone and called the uh, called the friend of home to come to get us. But I had done, you know, everything I could, so it was all right. We're going to a better place. Mm -hmm. But I said that to say this: um, back in 2018, my dad called me to go to his, to the home house. My brother had passed, and I got over there. I had to call the rescue squad and the uh, the uh, sheriff's office and. And then in um, 2019, his brother, my dad and other brother, I was getting off work, leaving Rocky Mountain, I was at CBT exit, and uh, his fiance called and told me that he was being in the bed and were unresponsive. So I think I was uh, from QBT to, to his house, it was probably a good 10 minutes, but I probably stayed in about four. Because I was <laughs> about 100 miles an hour. I was not going to go miles an hour. So I got there to call the rescue squad, the paramedics for him. And then on last Sunday, um, I went to uh, Chris Chapel to help them celebrate their homecoming. It was the first church I had joined. And I went to give a donation in honor of my best friend that died last year in October. He also was a member there. And I got there about 11 o'clock, and around 11 19, I got a call to come to Tarleville. I had a cousin that had failed. He was on the floor. Uh, his wife and his daughter had found him. Um, they had went to Wilson to do a uh, women's conference. So I had to leave Chris, go over, I'm going to hug your hand, 
because I feel like, you know, he was already gone. So I had to try to call my aunt and um, cousin. You know, I had to go to his house and get one of them. And then, um, but we was, and this cousin was at another cousin, we was at the burial on Saturday night, getting ready to marry him on Sunday. And this cousin said he was not coming because he was on crutches, but he was doing okay. And he fell dead Sunday morning. Wow. So then um, I had to do the burial that evening. And then this Sunday, I'm glad to know that Mr. Um, Marvin Knight has been in the hospital all week. He's on the way home. So, Amen. You know, right? Amen. 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 Amen.
I, I just want to make sure you want nobody to sleep me here. I, I know when you start talking about them, people are lighting right up. I don't like neither one of them. But I'm a Jesus fan. Amen. Okay. So we hear this morning. Amen. Amen. Anybody, anybody have a customer? A song or anything? Oh, brother, can you back there? Lighten them up a little bit. on November the 5th at 2 p.m. on Piney Grove Church. You may begin paying your church anniversary assessments as early as today. $119, I guess, to Dr. Evangelist, Dr. Margaret Knight, which is the church anniversary chairperson. It says, we encourage every member of the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church support and attend all or as many church functions as possible. We are all one body in Christ, and we need all members of the body working together to keep the, I guess, keep the body strong and productive. Um, are there any announcements from the floor or over the airway? Okay, thank you. Stay blessed, and I'll enjoy the service. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Bill, for the announcements. And we do say great mercy and peace be unto you, my father's children. We thank God again for another day that He has blessed us and allowed us to come into the house of worship. Another day. I'm glad to see each one of you. It's good to see your smiling faces because it could have been the other way. God has richly blessed me, and I pray that He has done the same for you. Or at least we realize what he has done for Thank us. God. But I know that he has blessed you because he woke you this morning. Yes. Amen. And that's a blessing within Amen. itself. Amen. Just to be able to you know, open your eyes and to take a breath and to be able to wave your hand. What a blessing it is from the Lord. We thank God for all that he has allowed us to do and what he is continuing to uh, bring forward to us. It's good to see all our youth and to the Sunday school this Amen. morning. Amen. We, uh, we were delighted to hear Dr. Knight's voice during the Sunday school. You know, God has done a magnificent, wonderful job uh, in blessing her because we know of the condition earlier during the week. I told her she had us concerned, but God has brought her around. And we ought to just give God a praise for what he has done. Amen. Not only for her, but for, for our family, for we have been through so many things. Yeah. Oh, 
Diana had surgery during the week, but Lord, the Lord brought her through. And we thank God yeah. for her this morning. She wouldn't be here this morning, but she's picked up a cold. And she's not in the house this morning, just out of the abundance of caution this morning. But we thank God for for each of you. We thank God for the choir. And I, uh, we just want to remind you, I believe uh, there, there is a some information in the foyer. Uh, for the church body, it's something we discussed in our business meeting on Friday night. Please take a copy of that and uh, digest it, and then we'll discuss it further during our next business meeting. Uh, we also want to thank God for how he has continued to bless us and allow us to come into the house of worship during our Sunday school, our Bible study, and so forth. And uh, we're going to just stop our announcements here so we can get rid of that. But we thank God for you. Continue to pray one for another and, uh, and just notice the announcements in the bulletin. Amen. 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 Oh, <laughs> 
upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water and God said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light and it was good and God divided the light from the darkness and God called the light day and the darkness night and the evening and the morning were the first day I read from the first to the first of James Amen. Let every heart pray. Mm-hmm. Oh, precious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, oh, God, we come to you this morning, first of all, Lord, asking for forgiveness, Lord, for anything that we've done or said that's not in your will. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, then we come, Lord, giving you thanks, Lord. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, thank you for last night rest, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, we could, without you, Lord, we wouldn't be able to get up this morning. Yes. Oh, God, we thank you for the service that we're in this morning, Lord. Yes. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, God, we just want to thank you, Lord, for the storm that came through this week, Lord, yeah. and kept us in all, kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger, Lord. Yes. Oh, God, we just want to thank you right now in the name yes. of Jesus, Lord. Lord. Oh, God, we ask you to just have your way this morning, Lord. Yes. Oh, God, move in your way, Lord, that you want everything to be moved, Lord. Yes. Oh, God, touch everyone, Lord. Yes. Oh, God, the sick, Lord. Oh, God, bless the one that's not sick, Lord. Oh, God, just have your way this morning, Lord. Oh, God, we give you thanks and we give you praise, Lord. Well, can your name, your son, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Let me go. 
the church covenant. If there's any gift, if you have an agreement between your church, um, you can join in with us. By what common spirits do we enter into spiritual fellowship and common covenant relations with one another?
And then, Lord, just to give us all your praise this morning. Then, Lord, look upon the sick, each and everywhere. You know their illness, Lord. So, Lord, we just ask you this morning, just to touch them with a finger of love this morning. Then, Lord, those who die, sickness, continue to bless them this morning. Then, Heavenly Father, we just ask you to look over the world this morning and bless our economy this morning. For, Lord, our world is still getting in trouble. And, we, Lord, we need you to straighten everything out. And, Lord, we just ask you on this day to bless the children, Lord, in this world. Continue to lead them and guide them in the way that you have them to go. Not only the children, Lord, but us church family and all over the world. And then, Lord, we want to thank you for all your blessings this morning. Amen. 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 Tell me one more. 
Gospel of Luke, chapter 23. And we're going to lift up a few verses from 26 through 31 from this passage of Scripture. Luke 23, 26 through 20 through 31. The King James edition reads, And as they laid him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a serene, coming out of the country. And on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people, and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming, in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wounds that never bear, and the paths that never gave suck. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall they do in the dry? Pray with us. Eternal Father, Lord, we come again to say thank you. thank you. Father, I thank you for your grace and mercy. Lord, I thank you for blessing us with another day and another opportunity to stand before these, your children. Father, I acknowledge that I'm not even myself, but Lord, I ask that thou will send the preaching, the Holy Spirit, that it may use my tongue to preach your word, use my mind to store house of your wisdom. Bless these children, dear Lord, that that same spirit may abide with them, dear Lord, that someone, dear Lord, may be encouraged, dear Lord, to move to higher height. Someone may be encouraged this morning to tell somebody, I will be all right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. See, the verse 31 of that passage of scripture says, For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And if you will allow me this morning, we will help to just share with you, it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in a dry? It's time to wake up. We all, we have seen trees in our lives, particularly growing up in a rural setting. You've seen various trees in your yard or traveling along the highway. And you always notice that when the storm comes your way, it is usually the dry tree, the dead tree, the weak tree. The one that succumbs to the wind. Particularly if you have one of those uh, shallow root oak trees in your yard. The wind comes and it will blow it down. But those that are full of life and vibrant, those that are green and still growing and strong, it takes more to blow them down. For if they do this in a green tree. What shall they do in a dry tree? We'll tell you right now that Jesus is the green tree. He is the tree of life. He is vibrant. He is growing. He is strong. He's able to endure all things. We, me and you, will the 
dry tree. Yeah. We are weak. Mm. We are shallow. Yeah. We don't have the strength. We need to lean upon Jesus Christ. Yes. We are the dry tree. Mm-hmm. For if they do this in a green tree, yes. what shall they do the to the dry? Yes. If they do this to a green tree, what have they done to the green tree? Verse 26 gives us an insight as to what's happening within this green tree. They led him away. And as they led him away, they grabbed hold of one Simon, who was coming from his country, and they laid on him the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. Verse 26 tells us that Jesus is facing a tremendous burden. He's headed towards the cross. And they have placed the bar upon Jesus. As they laid him away, even before Jesus was scourged, his physical condition was weak. It's reasonable to assume that Jesus was in good physical condition up until the night of his arrest. Now why do we say he was in good condition? Because the rigors of Jesus' ministry, that is traveling by foot throughout Palestine, would have precluded any physical illness or weak general condition, says Dr. William Edwards in the articles on the physical death of Jesus Christ from the Wall Street Journal of uh, of 1986. Yet during the 12 hours between 9 p.m. Thursday and 9 a.m. Friday, Jesus suffered many things, both physically and in the high stress challenges that took a toll on him physically. Yes, he was the son of God, but yes, he dealt, he walked in a physical body. And if he endured the same things that we endure. So the toll was taking a toll upon him. Jesus suffered great emotional distress in the garden of Gethsemane as indicated when his sweat became like great drops of blood. Although this is a rare phenomenon, it is highly emotional or in persons with bleeding disorder. As a result of a hemorrhaging, the sweat glands in the skin become fragile and tender. Jesus suffered the emotional stress of abandonment by his disciples. Jesus suffered the physical distress, the beating at the home of the high priest. He suffered a sleepless night. Jesus suffered being forced to walk more than two and a half miles. All these factors made Jesus vulnerable to the effects of scourging. Many of us, we would have given up after the abandonment of our friend. If that didn't get us, we would have given up after the beating. The first beating. Not the other 38 with us. But we would have given up after the first. But Jesus suffered through sleepless nights. Then had to walk two and a half miles. All before Jesus took the cross, he was whipped, scourged, as Pilate had earlier promised, I will chastise him. Scourging was a legal preliminary to every Roman execution. And only women and Roman senators or soldiers, except in the case of desertion, were exempt. The goal of scourging was to weaken the victim to a state just short of collapse of death. This is a green tree now. As the Roman soldiers repeatedly struck the victim back with force, 
the iron balls that cause deep contusion, and the leather thorns, and the sheep bones cut into the skin and subcapsulous tissue. Then, as the flogging continued, the lacerations would tear into the underlying skeletal muscles and produce quivering ribbons and bleeding flesh. Pain and blood loss generally set the stage for a circulatory shock. Mm -hmm. The extent of blood loss may well have determined how long the victim would survive the cross. Amen. This is a green tree now. We know that they already say the dry tree would have given us out of the first will. But the green tree, the severe scourging, and the intense pain, and the appreciable blood loss most probably left Jesus in a pre-shock state. Moreover, uh, hemorrhitis had rendered the skin particularly tender. The physical and mental abuse met it out by the Jews and the Romans, as well as a lack of food, water, sleep, and also contributed to his general weakened state. Therefore, even before the actual crucifixion, Jesus' physical condition was at least serious and possible critical. A green tree. As they laid him away, Jesus was laid away, his clothes were stripped off. This was painful and open wounds that had just began to heal. When the soldiers tore the robe from Jesus' back, they probably reopened the scourge of Romans. Can you imagine being beaten to the point where when they pull your clothes off, they pull flesh with their clothes being cut. Somebody have probably heard of the beatings in the Deep South. Now, when we say Deep South, we have to include North Carolina. How our ancestors were treated. And this year, Jesus endured far more than what they endured. And the weight as they laid him away, Jesus was crucified. He was like all victims of crucifixion, forced to carry the wood he would hang upon. The weight of the entire cross was typically 300 pounds. The victim only carried the crossbar, which weighed more anywhere from 75 to 125 pounds. When the victim carried the crossbar, he was usually stripped naked, and his hands were often tied to the wood. The upright beams of the cross was usually permanently fixed in a visible place outside of the city walls, beside a major road. It is likely that on many occasions, Jesus passed by the very upright that he would be crucified on. They laid hold on a certain man. The weeping condition of Jesus required this. The man named Simon, who was from Cyrene in northern Africa, modern day Libya. No doubt Simon was visiting Jerusalem as a Passover pilgrim from his native land, some 800 miles away. He knew little, if anything, about Jesus and had no desire to be associated with this man who was condemned to die as a criminal. Yes. Can you imagine that? His own disciples denied him. Yes. His own disciples abandoned him. Yes. And here is a stranger who has no desire to be associated with this man. He didn't know anything about him, but he didn't know one thing. He was being crucified. Yes. And he didn't know what to be associated with him. Yet the Romans were the law, and Simon was not given a choice. They laid hold on him, and they laid the cross that he might bear it. Perhaps he was chosen because he was an obvious foreigner and more 
conspicuous in the crowd. Mm -hmm. Stood out a little more. Because they wanted to make sure that Jesus stood out. Yes. Wonderfully, when we reason to believe that Simon came to know what it really means yes. to bear the cross yes. and follow Jesus. There is some evidence to, to suggest that his son became some of the early Christians. Rufus, his son, is mentioned in Romans 16 and 13. So, G Simon being a follower of Jesus Christ, a gathered sign. Verse 27 says, And great multitudes of people followed him. It was customary for a great multitude to follow a condemned criminal on his way to crucifixion. It was indeed to be a public event. According to the customs of crucifixion, the Roman God led with a sign that carried a man's thing and crime. As we know, what was what was on the superscription of Jesus' cross was Jesus, King of the Jews. The Jews took offense to that because they wanted to say that he said he's King of the Jews. But Pilate said, what I've written I'm with it. Jesus, King of the Jews. So as they followed him through the town, as he was carrying the cross, as he was carrying, they didn't take the short route, but they took the long route so as many people as possible could see how the Roman Empire treated his enemies. You know, sometimes, sometimes we, we, we see when we want to uh, get around, sometimes we'll take the shortcut. But the Romans wanted to make sure that these criminals, so to speak, they would took the longest route so that their enemies could see how they treated those in insurrection. So this would be a deterrent for those that would come after to learn to follow the Roman laws. But there was the daughters of Jerusalem who was following Jesus, and Jesus looked at them and said, Weep for yourselves and for your children. Don't weep for me. Yeah. With good reason. These women moaned and everything when they saw Jesus being treated in this fashion. Jesus essentially told them, don't weep for me, but weep for those who reject me. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is a green tree. Yeah. The green tree is going to be all right. But the dry tree, as for the word, these words themselves, they was especially noteworthy because they constitute the last connected discourse of the Savior before he died. All that he said after was fragmentary and mainly in the nature of prayer. This is what Dr. Spurgeon said, that this was his last fully connected discourse. Everything else was in the form of a prayer. But he said, blessed are the bearers. Yes. Normally, Jewish custom did just the opposite. They praised motherhood and stigmatized the bearers. Mm -hmm. But the days of the fall of Jerusalem would be so severe that the women would far prefer not to have children rather for them to go through such an awkward event in the city. I know we talked this Sunday school this morning about the future of our city, our children. I know I heard Deacon May mentioned on the vulture about that our children will be all right. But I want to let you know there's coming a time when we, when, when, when there are mothers that are going to say that I wish I had not buried a child because of what's coming right now. But I want to let you know, as long as you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it's going to be all right. For the days will come. For if they did these things in a dry tree, if they did these things in a green wood, what shall be done in a dry tree? Church of a living God. If they will take and crucify my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, who is the green tree? If they will crucify the one who has life. The idea is that if this faith of the innocent referring to Jesus himself, what will happen to the guilty? 
For Jesus is the green tree. He's innocent. He knew no sin. He did no wrong. If they did this to a green tree, what shall happen to us? We look around. We're living in a world. We're living in a time where we need to wake up. Church of God. We're living in a time where men and women are lovers of themselves. We're living in a time where they will crucify you with their words and their actions and their deeds. We're living in a time when our own people won't come together. We used to talk about black against white, white against black, but now church of a living God, we need to get together as a race that we need to stand tall and strong because we are dry. We are dying. We are weak. We are messed up. But the only way that we can get it together is to seek ye first the kingdom of God. Black or white, red or yellow, rich or poor, male or female, it does not matter who you are, what walk of life you come from. You need to wake up. You need to get it together. For if they did this in a green tree. Amen. If Jesus suffered all this, he suffered the whip. He suffered the beating. He suffered walking two and a half thousand with that cross. He did all this for you and I. He suffered for your sins and my sins. He knew no sin. If an innocent man, if the green tree suffered like this, what do you think shall happen to the dry tree? Those who have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Going to need him. Time is winding up. You're going to run to the mountains. Cry mountain fall on me. Because the evil days are coming. I know you're looking around and you wonder how much more evil can it get? You look around and you see high inflation. Gas prices skyrocket. The cost of food on the rise. You have uh, abuse in the home. Our children say like they're not safe in school anymore. We have a judicial system that just don't honor justice anymore. We have a political system that has ran amok. How much more can we stand? But I want to let you know, Church of a Living God, this morning, that we need to wake up and know that Jesus suffered and died for your sins and my sins. He died that we might not have to suffer in a world of evil. For time is winding up. He's coming back and looking for a church without spot or wrinkles. Church of a living God. If you think it's bad right now, wait till the rapture shall come. When those that are in Christ I want to be ready when they come. Church of a living God. It's time to wake up. Will you be ready when they come? And the only way to get ready, the only way to be ready, is to study God's Word. 66 books in this Bible. It tells you how to love one another. It tells you that for God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in Him shall not perish, but have and this green tree, this green tree, they could not cut down. They thought he was down. But when you got life flowing through you, they can't not, they can knock you down. But they can't knock you out. Church of a living God, if they do it in a green tree, what will they do in a dry tree? If they try to knock a green tree down, they try to knock a dry tree down. So I'm trying to tell you this morning, what we need to do, we need to seek God. We need to come to God. We need to fall on the knees. We need to say, Lord, have mercy, please, on a sinner like me. For time is winding up. We don't have as long as we used to have. No matter what age you are, you don't have as long as you used to have. But what you do have right here today 
It's this time. If you don't know Jesus in the part of your sin, now's the time to come and say, Lord, I hear, I hear to the power of the Most High. If you have accepted him and you've been playing and thinking at times, you have plenty of time. And maybe this morning you're waking up and you want to acknowledge, Lord, I need you more today than I did yesterday. Today is your time. It's time to wake up. The choir is going to give us a selection of this, Sean. Doors of the church, they're always open. But one more time, we extend the invitation that you may come and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. If there's one this morning, will you come? It's time to wake up. Take time to read the Word of God. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Oh, how I love. How I love. Just calling your name. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus. Jesus. Oh, how I love. How I love. Just calling your name. I remember the time when I felt so all alone. When I needed you, Jesus, all I had to do was call. Sometimes in the morning, sometimes late at night. But when I got up on my knees, Jesus, everything was hard. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, sweet Jesus, Jesus, oh, how I love, how I love, just calling your name, oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, sweet Jesus. same right. The church should give you the same right that we all have. 
and I'm Chuck Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. 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 Sister Braswell, we, today is the first Sunday, as we have traditionally done, we will prepare for baptism. Um, we're going to set a, set a date and a time, and we'll get back, we'll get back to you, but we want to do it as expeditiously as yes. we're possible, yes. Yes. the Lord allows us to come together. For I would do it right now. If there, water, if there was pool, water in the pool. But we want to prepare ourselves. <laughs> and we want to be ready. We're going to, we're going to be ready. But we thank God. It's time to wake up. Amen. And the Lord has blessed them this morning to come. And let us continue to encourage these young ladies. Amen. Amen. Mothers, encourage them. Yes. Amen. Deacons, encourage them. Amen. Members, encourage them. Amen. This journey, amen. This journey, we need all of us yes. working together. Yes. Yes. Because think about what we have been through. Yes. Amen. And how we have had to get to where we are. Amen. And the reality of it right now. We are still dry trees. Yeah. Yeah. But we have been rooted and planted with yeah. the green tree. Yeah. So we have some strength. Yeah. We have yeah. some knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. These young ladies, they are the dry tree. Yeah. And they need the strength yeah. from the green tree. Yeah. And we need to be connected together. Yeah. Yeah. And let us put aside all matters. Yeah. Yeah. And let us just pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen and encourage us. Gracious Father, Lord, come again to say thank you, Father. Father, I thank you for uh, these young ladies, dear Lord, that have come right now. Father, one, come, dear Lord, to rededicate, the other, come to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. But Father, through it all, dear Lord, Father, they have come and acknowledged, dear Lord, that they can't do it without you, dear Lord. They'll come and acknowledge, dear Lord, that I, they need you, dear Lord. They need you to hold their hand, lead them, and guide them along this way. Now, Father, we ask the Lord that thou would touch Anderson Chapel, the Lord. Father, that we would be the nurturers, dear Lord, that you will have, dear Lord. Father, in the midst of trials and tribulations, dear Lord, when it seems like they can't find any other help, when they can't find the understanding of the scripture, dear Lord, they would call a member, they would call a mother, they would call a deacon, they would call a member and tell them that I'm in the midst of a decision. Mm. And Father God, that these members, these mothers, these deacons, yes, would give them the best of yes, advice. God. They will yes. encourage them along the yes, way. Jesus. Father, thank we you. Just thank, you thank you for all that you have done, thank thank you. what you are doing, yes. and what you continue to do. Yes. In the blessed master's name of Jesus yes. the Christ, we say amen. 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 for the Lord's Supper. We thank God for His grace and His mercy. We thank God for sending us more laborers to the vineyard. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. We ought to be excited. We ought to be on fire. And we ought to tell somebody that great things are happening. Amen. At Anderson Chapel. Amen. 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 As we come at this table, Jesus said that this is the remembrance of how he suffered and died. We have already 
to the message this morning reminding you just what he did, just how he suffered and died for our sin. If they did, it's been a great trip. What shall they do in the dry tree? It's time to wake up. As often as we do this, we do show forth his death and his suffering till it should come again. Minister Howard is going to read what Paul reminded the church of Kumei. How they should handle this, this special and precious occasion. For there must be also here seek among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone take before other his own um, supper. And one is hungry, and another is drunk. What have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I, have, I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. <clears throat> and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also, he took the cup, which he had sipped, I mean, which he had sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye be show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among them, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we will not we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together into condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. Amen. As they was eating, Jesus took bread and he blessed it and break it and gave to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body. And as he took the cup and gave thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth the fruit of the vine until uh, that day when I drink it uh, new with you in my Father's kingdom. We are not able to bless this bread and bless this wine, as Jesus did, but we are able to ask the Father, ask the Father to bless this bread and to bless this wine, just as he did with Jesus. As Deacon May shall lead us in prayer, Focus upon your own. Don't focus upon your brother. Focus upon your sister. Lord, say, what is my life like? Lord, that I'm worthy. Lord, am I able? Truth or reality of it is none of us are worthy. But what makes us worthy is the fact that we have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. And he acclaims it. So as we are common right now, Judge yourself, so you be not too. Thank you, man. Father God, again, we come, Father God, and just let you take this moment. First of all, Father God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who shared his blood for the remission of sin. Realize, Father God, we are too weak to change this bread, this wine. When you have found us, mm -hmm. we ask you, Father God, to change from a physical to Yes, Lord. But most of all, Father God, as we stand here, Father God, we ask you, each one of us, just us, mm -hmm. not one another, mm -hmm. 
Jesus later in the upper room because the disciples he left the bread and the wine and Jesus started to start it. the blood, body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The choir, if you have a song. Bless the cup of the wine. He said, Drink ye all of it. The wine represents the blood, his blood, the blood of the New Testament. He said, There's no more drink of the fruit of the vine till you drink it anew 
with God. It is Father's Day. Yeah. What a glorious idea to know that you're with us. Yeah. With us. Yeah. And I'm looking for that glorious day yeah. when we shall all gather together yeah. around God's throne. Yeah. Yeah. We shall have no more yeah. death, no more sorrow. Yeah. We shall, every day shall be highly happy. Yeah. For God has given his son, yeah. and the son gave his life. Yeah. That we may have a right to the tree of life. Amen. 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 After they had died, they sang a hymn and they went out into the Mount of Olives. We do not have the Mount of Olives, but we do have our own name. Let us go into our name, proclaiming that Jesus is Lord of all. Amen. As the choir shall give us this lecture, let us rise to our feet. Amen. 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 Amen.